I miss my mother's bread, my mother's coffee, and my mother's touch. And childhood grows within me, day after day. And I love my very life because if I am to die, I'll be ashamed of my mother's tears. My name is Ahmed Masood. This is my story, the story of my mother, my family, my homeland, and the journey I made in June 2009 to reclaim them. I see her through a shadowy tunnel lying on a dirty bed, scarcely breathing, a flicker of light around her. Through the darkness, I hear men crying, weeping, the voices of my father and my brothers, and beyond them, the rumble of distant explosions and the hum of drones. I reach towards her, cocooned in shadow, but a sudden fear checks me, as if a pit has opened up before my feet, and childhood grows within me, day after day. There, do you see? Where? It doesn't look like anything. Well, that's the shoulder, and that little pulsing thing. That's the heart? Yeah. Because that's so weird. And that's what we can hear. Yeah, it's um, around 120 beats. Mohammed, Khefalek. Okay, listen, Habibi. They took mum in this morning. I thought... A slot came up suddenly. Okay. How did it go? Okay, I think. Long, 12 hours. I'll just strap that on a bit tighter so I can measure the head. Look at that foot going. <laughs> so weird feeling it on the inside and seeing it there. Look, put your hand there, though. You can feel it. Oh, it's alive. Doesn't that hurt? No, it's just weird. Has to be a boy with a kick like that. Typical Palestinian. Let me out. Oh, God. <laughs> they had to remove half the colon, the womb, the ovaries. Well, how is she? Still unconscious, in intensive care. And Dad? Well, not great. The surgeon brought the bits out to show us. Allah. And Dad just cracked. He ran downstairs and smoked about a hundred cigarettes. I mean, I felt pretty sick, but I thought someone's got to stay strong. <laughs> Listen, Habibi. I want you to think about maybe coming back to see us, to see Mum. You know I've been desperate to come. Since the war. For Dad, it will make a huge difference. Also for Hind and Tariq. And for Mum, I think it could bring her back to life. 18 weeks? Oh my God. Halfway. Oh God. Look, my love. What's the matter? Ah, uh, it's okay. Uh, let's just go. I need some air. What did Heather say? She said, I think you should go. Wow. Yeah, she's been incredibly supportive, sympathetic. She's never even met my family. Oh, I must be so weird. I told her I'd spoken to the Free Gaza movement, who run the boats from Cyprus, you know. I yeah. think she was a bit taken aback. What, that you'd already started? Yeah. They've got a boat going in mid-June and another in mid-July. I thought I could go out on one, come back on the other. And there's no sign of the border opening? No. What are the chances of a boat getting through? I don't know. The Israelis rammed the last one in January. I just feel I have to go. I have to try. My dad's a diabetic. He's going crazy with the stress. My younger sister hins on her own at home, trying to keep everything going. My brother, Tarek, doesn't do anything to help. My older sisters keep phoning, asking me to explain what the doctors are saying. <laughs> asking you? But they think I know more about cancer treatment because I live in London. And there are no colostomy bags. What? They're embargoed. God. And totally inadequate water supplies and power cuts, and it's all shit. Literally. Mama told me Mum's having to lie on plastic bags in case of accidents. A woman of her age. It... Well, humiliating. This is my mother, the strong one. She's always kept the family together. Ahmed, you have to go. 
I've never seen you so upset before, so desperate. I haven't seen my mum for seven years. Listen, I'm going to be in Egypt next month on holiday. Oh, yeah. Maybe I can try and get into Gaza too, you know, with a UK passport. Maybe they'll let me through. Or through a tunnel. Alex, the tunnels are... I was joking. Oh. Either way, I'll be there, one side or the other, cheering you on. You have to try. And if Heather's supporting it's you... It's not that simple. My wife is pregnant with our first child. If I'm killed or trapped in Gaza or in prison... <laughs> then we start the free Ahmed Masood campaign. Hmm. What? When Heather said... Yeah, go, she was sitting opposite me in the park by the hospital with her hand on her tummy. And I was crying and I said... You're not going to stop me? And she said... No, I am not going to stop you. If you feel you must go, I am supporting you. And I and I wanted to shout at her and say, just tell me what to do. Either stop me or make me go, but don't... But she can't do that. No. <laughs> On the plane to Cyprus, flying back the way I came seven years ago. Back to Gaza, inshallah, and London drops away like a husk, a dream. Did I really do those things? Study, work, make friends, find a wife. Do I really have a child waiting to be born? No visa. Your embassy told me I didn't need one. I'm married to an EU citizen. Do you have their letters? And your marriage certificate? I remember the beautiful girl on the desk, seven years ago. Her thick black hair, tanned face, her elegance. How I wanted to impress her. I wanted her to ask me more questions to show off my English. I can do it. I'm not just some Palestinian subhuman. Go on. Ask me anything you like. What is the purpose of your visit? Uh, I want to hide. I'm here for a holiday. Where is your wife? Oh, she's... back in London. A special welcome to ex-Congresswoman and 2008 Green Party presidential candidate, Cynthia McKinney. Yay! Yay! Nobel Peace Laureate, Mairead McGuire. Hey! And we're also very pleased to welcome Ahmed Massoud, who's traveling to visit his mother in hospital in Gaza. Now, some possible outcomes of our voyage. Essentially, once the spirit of humanity comes within 20 miles or so of the coast of Gaza, we have three scenarios. First, the Israeli Navy allows us through, we reach Gaza, everyone lives happily ever after. <laughs> Second, the Israelis board our vessel and arrest everyone on board. In which case, it is essential that we all stick together for Ahmed's sake. Something stinging the sole of my foot. Fear. Oh, I know it. That feeling when I put my right foot on top of the left and squeeze down hard to engage my mind on pain distract me from the thought of being arrested. The rest of us will be released and deported once our embassies interfere, possibly with a fine imposed by an Israeli civil court. As a Palestinian, Ahmed will be subject to a military court and risks a lengthy term of imprisonment. I feel the room darkening, gagging, gripping the edges of my chair as tight as I can. Come on. I'm still here in Cyprus, safe. I can still bail out. So, in this scenario, we all refuse to be released until Ahmed too has been released. Your point of information is your lawyer, who will be communicating with all of us. Do not trust any other information the Israelis feed you. I look at these sympathetic, supportive faces, and all I can think is, I am the trouble here. I am the one making things more dangerous. The third scenario is that the Israelis open fire on the spirit of humanity, or ram her, as happened in January. Now, we're sending round a form for each of you to fill out. 
stipulating what you would like us to do and whom we should contact in the event of your death. I never felt my hand so shaky. Please make sure you bury me in Gaza, even if it takes centuries. Signed, Ahmed Masood, 2406-09. The smell of our land is calling for us. From this port to that, which has our beloved. Take us back home, O oh captain, to smell its sand. I'm helping scrub the decks, clearing up the mess from the paintwork they've been doing, but I keep stopping, gazing eastwards out to sea. Okay, we're hoping to get going as soon as possible. Apparently, the Cypriot authorities have received a threat that the Israeli Navy will shell the spirit of humanity if we set sail with our cargo of cement for the Al ship. Oh, no. 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 But they're negotiating to get us going as soon as they can. Hey, how's it all going? Uh, still no movement. There's loads of camera crews on board interviewing the other passengers. And not you? No, they're all politicians, activists, aid workers. I only come from Gaza. I'm the Jonah on the boat. But they won't let you leave if it's a life-threatening situation, will they? You have your sailors. Arais, the right wind. Arais, a good sea. Arais, take us there. Ya Rais. Okay, here's the chorus again. Sing with me. Ya Rais. Rais. Not Rais. It means, oh, Captain. Come on. Ya Rais.